Life got in the way for a bit, but I'm back with a new video. About history this time, like I promised I would get to eventually. Though, to be honest, I've changed my approach a little. Originally, I was going to make a few really in-depth videos about every little detail, but I don't think that would be very interesting to watch. So what I'm doing now is a little different. I'm going to start with this video, which will act as a primer of sorts, just kind of a list of important historical events, and then follow that up with a few bite-sized videos about specific parts of Wavebreaker's history that I will just allude to in this video. Like for example, the video after this is going to go into more detail on the Great Drowning, which finally brings me to the beginning of the actual topic, so let's start the history lesson. The year is 722 AD, which in this case stands for After the Drowning, in reference to the Great Drowning, a storm tide more destructive than any, and supposedly the first ever. It not only brought an end to the united majocracy of Priestland, but also killed countless people and changed the coastlines forever. After this, a few hundred years ago, roughly around the year 310, a small kingdom by the name of Breahorn came into existence. It spun the fastendom known today as Zuderhorn, Norderhorn, and Olbilu which is part of Jelen and was once known as Westerhorn. Though the kingdom fell apart eventually, about 165 years after its founding, lasting effects of its existence can still be found today, as the Breahornish dialect of the Priestly language is still used among the upper classes of Tarn, as opposed to the so-called Low Prieske the commoners often speak. Breahornish is also very close to modern West Prieske spoken in parts of Jelle. The Arcanum formed across Prieske lands sometime during the early to mid 500s, and for a while it was just one of many schools found in bigger cities of the region, many of which were much older already. It was founded by a wealthy and influential house, and as such was quickly able to attract good teachers. After only a few decades, it had become one of the most far-reaching organizations along the coast of the Lydic Ocean. Unfortunately, the boom in magical education was cut short by what's now known as the Bloody Ascension, a power grab by rogue mages resulting in a war in the 560s. The situation made it clear that it would be necessary to more strictly control the knowledge of magic. In response to the Bloody Ascension, the Akanum chose to only ever teach young children, and to vet them carefully through years of watchful guidance. In the year 680, the Holy Imperium of Eastbrunt to the north and northeast expanded rapidly into Prieske territory, conquering about half of it, a bit of land they call Priedna. It was in this war for their home that a man named Tode Fontan united the struggling Fastentummer under his banner and became king of what is now known as Tarn. A foreign governor was instated in Priedland, a noble from the Imperium. This governor spoke Dutrich, the language of the Imperium, which is spoken by nobles in Priedland to this day. During the kingdom's early years, the Arcanum felt emboldened to tighten their grip on all magic users outside of their organization, where before they would only go after egregious misuse of power, it now became clear that any use of magic outside of the Arcanum's members would be restricted for, in quotes, the safety of all. Not long before King Tordus' death, the Arcanum put to paper in 696 to outlaw any use of magic by any person who had not graduated the Arcanum. In the year 697, Tode died at the age of 63. His oldest living son, Wert, inherited the kingdom. The Imperium, now busy expanding the reach eastward across the sea, smelled an opportunity. The governor of Priedland was replaced by a local, who was made fast by the Imperator himself. This carefully chosen new first seek to unite all Prieske territories under his crown, and started another war with Tan. 
This second conquest lasted years, but didn't amount to much more than unnecessary death on both sides. Wert proved himself a worthy successor to his father in the war, though he was still much disliked throughout and after the conflict. The second conquest officially ended after diplomatic negotiations in 706, almost exactly eight years after it started. Okay, so I've been editing this video right now, and I just noticed something. I kind of forgot to mention a very important date, that being the founding of the Kingdom of Tarn. I kind of say it happens, but I never say when, so let me fix that. The Kingdom of Tarn was founded in 683, and let's also add it to the timeline while we're at it. Here we go. Beautiful. That's it. Thanks for watching, and remember, this will all be relevant for the exam, so study hard, ingrain this timeline into your minds, and see you next time. Bye bye.